What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here with your $1,400 third stimulus check update. President Joe Biden is facing increased pressure today to get the third stimulus check package signed as well as a backlash from even his own party over what he said over student loan forgiveness late last night. I got all the latest details for you guys in this video. If you're new to the channel, Make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on updates on the third stimulus check package, as well as the other things we cover on this channel, such as student loan forgiveness, social security increases, mortgage and rental assistance, the $1,400 stimulus checks, the stimulus checks that are coming after in the next stimulus check package, and more. And if you can, hit the like button for us. It really helps out our channel. President Joe Biden is in the limelight today for multiple different things. Number one, late last night he says, quote, I'm tired of talking about Trump, a.k.a. the former guy. He says, quote, for four years, all that's been in the, in the news is Trump. For the next four years, I want to make sure the news is the American people. He says, quote, I'm tired of talking about Donald Trump. I don't want to talk about him anymore. This is uh, quite outspoken for President Joe Biden, as he uh, normally steers clear about talking too much about former President Donald Trump. Apparently, he's putting the message out there that he doesn't really want to talk about him anymore. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. However, President Joe Biden is taking a lot of heat today from his own party over what he said about student loan forgiveness. I actually have the later clip that I wasn't able to find earlier. I'll show you the first part and then the second part and what the controversy is over. Student loans are crushing my family, friends, and fellow Americans. Me too. <laughs> The American dream is to succeed, but how can we fulfill that dream when debt is many people's only option for a degree? We need student loan forgiveness beyond the potential $10,000 your administration has proposed. We need at least a $50,000 minimum. What will you do to make that happen? I will not make that happen. It depends on whether or not you go to a private university or a public university. It depends on the idea that I say to a community, I'm going to forgive the debt, the billions of dollars of debt for people who have gone to Harvard and Yale and Penn and schools, my children. I went to a great school. I went to a state school. Um, but is that going to be forgiven rather than use that money to provide for early education for young uh, children who are come from disadvantaged circumstances? But here's what I think. I think everyone, and I've been proposing this for four years, Everyone should be able to go to community college for free, for free. That's that's cost nine billion dollars and we should pay for it. And the tax policies we have now, we should be able to pay for it. You spend almost that more money as a break for people who own racehorses. And I think any family making under one hundred twenty five thousand dollars whose kids go to a state university they get into, that should be free as well. And the thing I do in terms of student debt that's accumulated is provide for changing the existing system now for debt forgiveness if you engage in volunteer activity. For example, if you were, uh, if, if you're teaching school, after five years, you'd, you would have $50,000 of your debt forgiven. If you worked in a uh, battered women's shelter, if you worked and so on. So you'd be able to forgive debt. Thirdly, I'm going to change the position that we have now to allow for debt forgiveness. This is so hard to calculate, whereby you can now, depending on how much you make and what program you saw, you can work off that debt by the activity you have. And you cannot be charged more than X percent of your take home pay so that it doesn't affect your ability to buy a car, own a home, et cetera. Each of my children graduated from school. I mortgaged the house. I was listed as the poorest man in Congress for, not a joke, for over 30 years. And, uh, um, but I was able to borrow, I bought a home I spent a lot of time working on, and I was able to sell it uh, for some profit. But my, uh, my oldest son graduated uh, after undergraduate and graduate school with uh, $136,000 in debt after working 40, I mean, excuse me, 30 hours a week during school. 
My other son went to Georgetown and Yale Law School, graduated $142,000 in debt, and he worked for the parking service in, 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 uh, down in Washington. My daughter went to Tulane University and then got a master's at Penn. She graduated $103,000 in debt. So I don't think anybody should have to pay for that, but I do think you should be able to work it off. My daughter's a social worker. My other son became a, ran the World Food Program USA and so on. They, they didn't qualify. But my point is, I understand the impact of the debt and it can be debilitating. And I think there's an old, a whole question about what universities are doing. They don't need more skyboxes. What they need is more money invested in in, in, in making. So that's why I provide, for example, $80 billion, $70 billion over 10 years for HBCUs and other minority serving universities because they don't have the laboratories to be able to bring in those government contracts that can train people in cybersecurity or other future uh, endeavors that pay well. But I do think that in this moment of economic pain and strain that we should be eliminating interest on the debts that are accumulated, number one. And number two, I'm prepared to write off the $10,000 debt, um, but not 50. Mr. President, let me ask you. Because I don't think I have the authority to do it by sign of the pen. So those key words there at the end were really the most important ones. Well, there's a lot of things there. He said that people should be able to go to uh, community college for free which is absolutely huge. He also thinks that the student loan interest debt should be frozen, it's, which it currently is for the moment. And he says that he's willing to do $10,000, but he doesn't think he can do $50,000 through a presidential executive order. Question is, does he think he can do $10,000 through a presidential executive order? Other progressive Democrats are saying that this opens the door for other parts or other types of debt forgiveness, such as possible credit card debt forgiveness in the future, because, well, the credit card debt forgiveness is actually a worse crisis than student loan debt forgiveness. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. But President Joe Biden is taking a lot of criticism today because of two things he said. Number one, it depends on what college you went to whether or not you get student loan forgiveness. And the other thing is that he's not willing to go over $10,000. Other Democrats, such as Elizabeth Warren and AOC, are already pushing back. The longer answer here was the president saying, look, I'm not for lo uh, loan forgiveness, uh, a blanket loan forgiveness, because we should also consider uh, whether that student went to a public university or private university. And he also said that he wants to use that money instead to provide for early education for young disadvantaged students. Um, and he's also talked about making college or community colleges free uh, for every American. But uh, we've already gotten a pretty swift response here from those within the president's party who have really pushed for uh, loan forgiveness. Uh, just talking about the burden these students take on once they graduate because the sheer scale of the debt they're already carrying. Yeah, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has been uh, on the forefront of that battle. She was quick to tweet out uh, a couple points here. Uh, one, who cares what school someone went to? Entire generations of working class kids were encouraged to go into more debt under the guise of elitism. This is wrong. And two, she points out, nowhere does it say that we must trade off early childhood education for student loan forgiveness. We can have both. Uh, of course, that was in response to what we heard from uh, President Biden talking about uh, giving advantages to people who may have gone to public schools like he went to over maybe some of the elite schools uh, like a Harvard or a Stanford, which is interesting considering the fact that, you know, some of those schools have some pretty serious financial aid packages. So it does kind of raise questions about favoring uh, students who may have taken those schools up on those financial aid packages to reduce the amount of debt they might have after graduating. I don't know, perhaps personal experience uh, coming out from me there. Uh, but we also heard from other people who have been on this front as well, including Elizabeth Warren, basically saying that they're going to continue to fight for all of that as well. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. The battle for student loan forgiveness is on, along with the battle for the $15 an hour minimum wage, whether or not it's going to be in the third stimulus check package. We actually had some interesting news from Senator Joe Manchin, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, on the $15 an hour minimum wage, he said earlier that basically as long as the Senate is allowed to pass uh, 
the $15 an hour minimum wage, he would be in support of it. He says he's not in support of anything that is not allowed. And basically what he meant by that is that the parliamentarian, there's a lady in the Senate called the parliamentarian who is going to decide what can and cannot be passed in the third stimulus check package with the reconciliation process because there's no Republican support. So the Democrats are passing this completely on their own with the reconciliation card. So Senator Joe Manchin is basically saying he's kind of let up a little bit on his pressure to not support the $15 an hour, an hour minimum wage in the third stimulus check package bill, which is one of the major hurdles that may or may not get it passed because they need every single Democrat in the Senate to say yes to pass this bill, which is going to be happening within the next few days in the House. So what Joe Manchin is saying is that basically if the parliamentarian says that the $15 an hour minimum wage is okay and is allowed to be passed with the budgetary reconciliation process, that he's kind of okay with it and will go for it based on what it seems like. There's also Kristen Sinema, another Democratic senator, who is not okay with the $15 an hour minimum wage. But the question is, will one of them be the only person to stand up and say, I'm going to delay this third stimulus check package. I'm going to be the only person in the country that does it uh, because of my beliefs. That would be a strong, strong thing to do. I will keep you updated. Here is Democratic Senator Bernie Sanders, who is the Senate budget chairman, who is in charge of the reconciliation process on the third stimulus check package. I want people to understand what is in this bill. We're going to cut childhood poverty in half. March 14th is when a lot of folks' unemployment insurance runs out. How confident are you that something will be passed to make sure that people don't fall off the cliff? you got millions of people who will lose their unemployment benefits. We cannot allow that to happen. I am the chairman uh, of the Budget Committee. This bill is going through the Budget Committee, and we're working with leadership. We're working with the House to make sure that we pass this bill as quickly as we possibly can. And I want people to understand what is in this bill. It means if you are watching this program, the likelihood is if you're a working class person, you've already received $600 per person. We're going to provide another $1,400 per adult per kid for people on the 70, individuals under 75,000, couples under 150,000, because people are living in desperation now. They need that. That's a family of four, another 5,600 bucks. That's life or death for millions of families. We're going to raise that minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. Anderson, we're going to do something that we have not talked about enough in this country. We're going to cut childhood poverty in half because we're going to significantly increase the child tax credit. Uh, we are going to make sure that cities and states have the resources that they need so they're not going to be laying off teachers or firefighters or police officers or other municipal and state employees. This is a comprehensive bill which is attempting to address the unprecedented crises that working families throughout this country are facing. I mean, let's be clear. The very, very rich are doing just fine. Billionaires are seeing tremendous growth in their wealth. But working families today are living in more desperation than since the Great Depression, and Congress has got to move forward vigorously, do what the President of the United States campaigned on and wants to do. That's what we've got to do, not only to help American people, but to restore faith that government, in fact, can respond to the needs of ordinary Americans. And as Bernie mentioned there, there's a lot more than just the $1,400 third stimulus check in the third stimulus check package. There's the child tax credit, which is basically going to turn into a monthly stimulus check, $3,000 for one year for children ages 6 through 17, and $3,600 for children under the age of 6, which will be paid in monthly increments of $250 per month for children over 6 and $300 per month for children under the age of 6. This is expected to start in July even though it will pass before then because the IRS is going to need some time to set up a system like this that has never been set up yet. And it could also include a six-month one lump sum at the beginning for basically half of that money paid all in one time. There's also an increase and an expansion for the childless earned income tax credit, which will provide additional thousands of dollars of tax credits for uh, potential low-income Americans that do not have children and basically could be your version of a child stimulus check 
in addition to your $1,400 third stimulus check in this package, although this will come on your tax returns or as a tax refund more than likely. But there is so many different buckets of money in this third stimulus check package, as well as mortgage and rental assistance, utility assistance, property tax assistance, and more. I will have another video for you guys tonight at 11 p.m. We're going to hear directly from the White House on the third stimulus check package. That's 11 p.m. Eastern time tonight or 8 p.m. West Coast time. Remember, you won't get a bell notification for that, so you just got to show up on YouTube, see if it's on your homepage. If not, search It's Jimmy and find our channel in the... Uh, in the YouTube search and go and watch the newest video. Remember, new videos come out at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 8 p.m., and 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to subscribe down below and click the bell icon so you get notifications. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. I have dozens of students that have replaced their nine to five income selling products on Amazon, and I teach them how to do that. Click on one of those videos to watch them next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.